Now the Tema PSC shipyard and dry dock needs 200 million cities to revamp its alien operations. After a year long of failed search for an investor to partner the yard, the facility is fast losing business to competition in the sub-region. In this first part of a featured dubbed of a feature dubbed Cash Cow in the Bush, Josephine NJJ tells how much the country is losing owing to extreme neglect of the national assets. Engineer Sunday Okoro is a Nigerian ship owner and a client to the Tema PSC shipyard and dry dog. This is his fourth time this year of coming for a ship repair. He came in with a tack vessel used for towing oil tankers in Niger Delta in Nigeria. Engineer Sunday tipped the yard for its quality work but is worried about failure to meet deadlines. The people are doing well, you know, but I think they still need to improve their machinery and so, so that at least uh, the efficiency will be stepped up. The yard has just received a tank vessel from Nigeria. It's going to be here at the dry dock for 14 days, but it has already spent three days here. We have about 40 workers who will be executing various activities on the vessel. The Tema PSC shipyard and dry dock was established in 1965 by the late Dr. Kwame Nkrumah during the construction of the Tema Harbour to provide ship maintenance and repairs and the take oil and gas industrial services, civil engineering, fabrication and shipbuilding. But that cannot be said of it today. The three major facilities at the yard are in a sorry state. The plate workshop where all metal and rolling works were done had gathered dust and rusting away. At the fabrication workshop, louver blades have all broken and roofs of the building ripped off, leaking badly. This shop is purposely made for the blasting. So a machine that has been blasting the plates, you know, they normally use it for plates. And now it's not working for about 15 years now. And because of that, the job goes slow. And now we are using mobile machinery, so we use a blasting port to blast now. So if you blast, you have to turn it over before you blast again. But with this machine, if the plate passes, you blast it once and for all. The assembling block, though also in a bad shape, is in use. These wooden structures are restrooms for the workers. The welding shop has a few new equipment worth 15 million cities, which were procured by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA, and that is what workers used to undertake the offshore welding activities. The Tema PSC shipyard, which had a workforce of 1,000, now has only 280 workers. Since the year 2000, the yard has gone through turbulent times, including union rivalry and financial dwindling. The yard in 2015 was indebted to the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, SNIT, owed workers' salaries as well as clients to the tune of 5.4 million cities. Ghana, which used to rake in huge revenue from vessel calls from the Gulf of Guinea, is now making losses. These downside things are not working. They've broken down. We tried to maintain them until last year. They've all broken down. The job that they do in Senegal for one week, we are taking two weeks to do it in Ghana because the equipment are not up to modern standard. The operations of the yard was handed over to the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority in 2016 under the leadership of Captain Francis Kwesi Maika. Formed a strong or a revitalized management team, starting with regular management meeting and personally spearheading um, a marketing team that radically had to get the vessels coming in immediately. The finances were in a very bad shape, of course, because vessels, this facility totally depends on internal generated funds, and funds were in the negative. 
vessel calls began to improve from a low of 6 to 16 in 2017 and was able to back 25 million cities for that year. The facility, which was under the management of GPHA, has now been taken over by government again. In 2018, the yard raked in 38 million cities with 34 vessels calling. It was awarded International Organization Standardization ISO compliant, certifying the yard can enter the global market, but its current state would not permit it. Several attempts have been made by government to get an investor to revamp operations of the shipyard. As a result, a transactional advisor was hired. 25 companies submitted bids, but six were shortlisted, and Alka Energy topped the bid. But Alka Energy pulled out as a partner. We had information that there are Alka Energy who had already started operations or uh, decided to be part of our oil and gas program, were to be the uh, entity that was to help in bringing up the functionality of the shipyard. We are looking for the embers to settle to see how positive that would. But I must say that that love in getting the investor in-house on time um, affected the fortunes to a larger extent. It will be noted that Singapore and Malaysia shipyards commence operation the same period as Ghana. But the two countries have since gone ahead, maintaining the market lead in shipbuilding. Ghana has the largest dry dock and shipyard and used to be leading in the West Africa region. But not anymore. Competition is catching up on us fast. Nigeria, Togo, Senegal, Ivory Coast have all established a yard and business is booming for them. Now business moves straight to these other yards. And thus, the current state of the facility is causing us to lose millions of dollars. Just then, NGAJ TV3, Tema Shipyard. Well, it's indeed a cash cow in the bush, and that's the first part of Josephine and JJ's story. Definitely. So I'm sure we'll be seeing uh, the other parts in the subsequent bulletins.